I have time for us to turn our attention to uh, Gaelic Games and I'm delighted to welcome Jenny Moore to the show. Jenny, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Uh, it's a long way from the Kildare Miners to, um, is it Crave Rua? In, is it, are you Brussels based? We're Brussels based, yeah. Very we good. We usually go by Belgium, GA. Well, I was going to say, I did call you Belgium earlier on and I was like, well, that'd be a whole country. So, But actually, fair enough. Um, Belgium, GA. So what's your story? How did you end up playing with them? Um, I moved to Brussels in November 2019 and then um, I started playing then the following season, February 2020. And we had about a month of training before the pandemic hit. So this was our first, well, my first year playing with Belgium where we could actually play competitive games. And you made it all the way to the All-Ireland Junior Club quarterfinals. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, not bad. So um, how do you get there even? What's the qualifying process? Well, in Europe, we usually play nine-a-side tournaments. So all year we play regional tournaments first in Benelux. So it's Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and some teams from East Germany. Um, and then we have a tournament at the end of the year, the Pan Euros, which is Europe-wide. And we won all of those tournaments. But then we still have to play the 15-a-side to qualify out of Europe. They consider Europe like a county. Um, so we played Rennes in France, and we beat them, and then we were European champions. And then we went to Leeds to play Hugh O'Neill's. They were the All-British champions and we beat them. Then we were into the All-Ireland quarterfinal. Okay. Was the game uh, against Hugh O'Neill's, did you expect to win that or was that considered a significant step up in quality? Um, I don't think we expected to win it, to be honest. And yeah, definitely a significant step up, especially at this stage of the season because we've been travelling so much all year. It's kind of hard to rally people and get them to go. So we travelled with 17 players and... Um, and yeah, we were delighted to win that game. It's very tough. It was definitely the toughest game we played all year up until uh, last weekend. <laughs> I suppose the difference then, Jenny playing a team like Casa Blaney, is, is that it's a parish team and, and, and you know we used to playing with each other, uh, a very local team as well. Whereas like looking at the, the locations of, of your squad yesterday, like Kilchema, Johannesburg, Adelaide, Maynooth, Sao Paulo, Ballina, these are from basically everywhere. It's the United Nations team. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'd say that is the difference. And with Castle Blaney, they, they, they're a very young team, it seemed. Like I'd say a lot of them would still be minor. Um, and the, one of the biggest differences I noticed was that they just put so much pressure on the ball. We wouldn't be used to that in Europe. Like the second you have the ball, there's two of them on you straight away. But here in Europe, like you get away with a lot more. I think definitely a huge step up once you go to Britain and then a step up again going to Ireland. But yeah, our team is full of people from everywhere. Um, some people that never played before, like Clara, she plays full forward for us. Well, she played at centre forward at the weekend. She only started playing in um, 2019. She's from Copenhagen. She scored 3 2 at the weekend. Wow. <laughs> so some of them just take to it like a duck to water. <laughs> That's not bad. Um, can we go back to the game against the, the uh, team from Leeds? So, what was the score on that? How did that go? Um, that was 2 6 to 8 points. Okay, so you, you won relatively well in the end, a four-point win. Um, and, like, again, presumably in England, it's very few players who are picking it up for the first time, like you just talked about Clara there. Mostly it'll be Irish people living in England playing. Am I right about that? Yeah, I think the whole Leeds team, they were all Irish. Um, because afterwards, we all had dinner together and we were talking to a lot of them and, yeah, they didn't have anyone that hadn't grown up playing. So it, that was like playing an Irish team. But they wouldn't be... I suppose they wouldn't be together as long as a club in Ireland, but yeah, they were all Irish and all quite experienced. And can I just ask then, like, is the hope that um, a run like this keeps the panel together a bit more than maybe um, might otherwise be the case? That people would tend to come and go, kind of drop in and out, play a season. It's more of a lifestyle choice rather than you're born into this, you're going to do it for life. In Belgium, I'm talking about. Yeah, you see, the problem with Belgium is like some people are, are here for work usually and they're only here for six months or a year. And like, there's <sighs> nothing we can really do to stop that. So, like, sometimes over the years, like, some of the guys that are here a long time, they are talking about players, that, like, amazing players that they had, but they were only here for a year or two. So, yeah, that's something else we have to deal with. But I think for next year, most of our squad will be staying together. But there's an upside to that too. Like, we never know who will join us next year either. So, you know, it can go both ways. And uh, where do you recruit? Like, how do you find people who aren't Irish? Um, well, we train at a university, like on a rugby, an Astro rugby pitch on a university campus. And sometimes people just walk them by. 
like wow. ask what's this when they come down especially with the camogie i remember one night there was a girl she was living on campus and she said i see this training like twice a week and i used to play hockey she's from chile um marianne is her name and she you know saw the camogie twice a week and then she came down and asked what is this sport and can i join and yeah she plays now she's very good she's actually the camogie officer this year um same with the football we do things to try and promote it like we're very good pro and she promotes us a lot on social media and then people coming from ireland often would, would contact the club beforehand and ask could, could they join and then other people just maybe some girls play basketball with girls from brussels and then they ask them if they want to come try get a football so kind of different routes to get, get to recruit people when, when you talk about the commitment of the those non-Irish players as well, Jenny, I, I heard the story, your, your goalkeeper's from Greece. She had quite a, an interesting um, adventure trying to get her passport sorted for the for the tournament in the UK. Yeah, um, she put a message in the group when we were going to the UK saying, oh, remember, like you need to have a passport to get here. But you're all the Irish, like we all have passports because we needed to get in and out of Brussels from Ireland. But if you're in Europe, in the Schengen area, you don't need a passport to travel. So she was traveling everywhere in Europe, like going back and forth to Greece without a passport, just an identity card. So um, she couldn't get an appointment in, in the Greek embassy in Brussels until April, which would be too late, obviously. Um, so she flew back to Greece. Her dad got in the queue early in the morning because it's first come, for, first serve, got the passport. But then she has to wait. She had to wait a week, I think, before it was processed. Um, and they wouldn't post it. They don't post passports. So she had to go back and collect it. Um, and she flew directly from Athens to Manchester for the game in Leeds. Serious commitment from Elena. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit insane. <laughs> Worth it in the end, though. When you, once you get the result, you're happy enough. Um, yeah. It, it's a player-run club as well, Jenny. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, completely. Like, I know clubs in Ireland, you'd have so many people from outside helping out that don't play or past members. But here it's totally club run or player run. Everyone on the committee is a player uh, with player coaches. We're lucky this year we have a coach, but um, usually it's all the other codes. It's a player manager. One or two players take training every week and yeah, totally player run. And I know like you get the grants from the LGFA for those trips to, to the All-Ireland tournaments. So to the Britain or whatever, but but excuse me, uh, like the the other tournaments within Europe, when you're going to, as you say, Denmark or East Germany or uh, the Benelux countries, like are you having to pay for that yourselves or how does that work? Yeah, we have to pay for that ourselves. Um, usually for the closer tournaments in Benelux, when we go to the Netherlands, we drive and we go four or five in a car and go up and down the same day to keep the costs low. But then the Pan European Championship was in Galicia this year, we had to fly and or you could go by train, but I mean it take a few days. But um. Yeah, everyone had to foot the bill for that themselves. We do some fundraising and sometimes we can use that to help the students out. But the majority of um, the travel, we, we foot, the bill, foot the bill ourselves. What do you get out of playing? Why, why do you do it? Um, well, it, it's it's my favourite thing about Brussels is being back playing football. Um, I've met so many people through playing. Um, and like when you go for a weekend away, yeah, we play a tournament for the day, but it's like going away with your friends for the weekend. Um I think the social aspect is probably the best part. The uh, the management team I find interesting, uh, Jenny Cosmos Gilmore. Like people in Galway will be familiar with him. He's he's a Longford man, but uh, led the Galway men's under twenties team to all Ireland, all Ireland success in twenty twenty. So, what his story was essentially that he was moving to Belgium and looking for a team to to take over, and and it was yourselves that managed to to get him on board. I guess. Um. Yeah. He he came over here on secondment. I think it was last year that he. Yeah. It was early last year and he messaged the club um, I think he actually wanted to take on the men's team but they had a player manager at the time who was doing well with the team so um, then Anai Rios who was our player manager she convinced him to take over our team um, he had never trained ladies before but he seems to enjoy it so hopefully we'll keep him for another while well, it's but it's great like it's it's really changed our training like it's so much more intense when he's there it's so much better when someone from outside comes in like he just has more respect and um, the intensity just went way higher once he started training us. Well, obviously doing something right. The uh, the season's been incredibly successful. That difference between nine aside and 15 aside and only having 17 players, you don't obviously get to play 15 aside very often. So again, it, it's actually a completely different game, right? Yeah, completely. And with the nine aside, we hand pass it up the pitch the whole time. Like we don't really kick it very often and we always go for goals 
But like, I think that told on Saturday when like our scoreline of 5-2, um, we were still going for goals. And we didn't really have the range to kick from outfield. But Castle Blaine were able to kick points from everywhere. So with the nine aside, like you don't really have the chance to kick. The goals are much smaller as well. So we don't really kick points from far out. But it's something that we'll have to work on if we want to play the 15s next year. Um, but that that's one of the main differences is like kicking the ball and kicking for points from range. Is that why the the game against against Blaney had to be in Maastricht as opposed to Brussels? Is your pitch not the the full dimensions, or is there a reason for the nine side? It's not the full dimension. Yeah, there's only two fifteen side pitches in Europe. The right reg, like regulation size, um, in Ren and in Maastricht. So Maastricht's our home venue. If we have to play fifteen side, it's about an hour and ten minutes drive from Brussels. Um. Yeah, so we don't really ever train on a 15 side pitch either. We train on a rugby pitch, an Astro rugby pitch. But we usually only have half the pitch for training because with the four codes we share for three hours, like an hour and a half each train, or an hour and 15 minutes each training, and we've half the pitch. Basically, you need somebody in the European Parliament rec- recruitment section to go through CVs looking for uh, inter-county Gaelic footballers to come to Brussels for the next couple of years. Basically, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great if we could recruit that way. Well, if you have people from, if you have Clara Lambert from Copenhagen, what is it scoring three two? Having taken up taken up the sport a couple of years ago, yeah. that's they're clearly clearly taking up the uh, as you say, like a fish to water. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that was her second time to ever play a fifteen side game. <laughs> My God! So you keep, know, I think with her. a bit more practice, we could be yeah. even better. Jenny, good stuff. Congratulations on a great season. Thanks a million for joining us this morning and sharing the story with us. Thanks a million. Uh, Jenny Moore there from uh, Belgium GA uh, based 